Okay, there are some gotchas. There are some stu- some things that caught us off guard, um, and I wanted to cover those. And I also would just want to stay on this slide a little bit because I love this video here of, of uh, the punter from Michigan not even realizing that the ball's not in his hand and then just the look on his face. Poor guy. I feel for him. Um, editing the build was one of our first gotchas. It was tricky to update the build process template. It was based on the Git template you know, that we got from our uh, Visual Studio Online account. Um, however, it did not let me edit it easily on my developer machine, which had several different instances of Visual Studio installed. I had 2010, 2012, 2013, uh, RC1. And so I kept wrestling with it, trying to get DLLs in the GAC and saying, no, 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 use this, and trying to force it to use a particular DLL that I wanted it to use, and it just... It was too tough, so I ended up creating a virtual machine using VirtualBox, installing just Visual Studio on there, and then getting all the DLLs I needed for, from Team Foundation Server downloaded. And then I was able to edit the build. And so it, that took more time than I wanted it to take. I do chalk that up to we were using beta software, and we were in the early release of Team Foundation Service. So I don't think that's the experience today. The build. XAML works fine now, and, and the people that have edited it to add some things here and there, they've had no problem adding what they need. So I'm going to say that our experience and our ping won't be your ping. Um, we uh, edited a lot of XAML by hand, too, because the designer was adding things. But again, I think that has to do with the, uh, uh, with the beta nature of the software. Uh, we had some build activities that were very painful to get referenced correctly. So I will ask... Um, uh, if you are going to release um, a build activity to the to the web and let people use it, that's awesome. Please release your source code so that we can download and, and update it to the right DLLs we need it. Um, one of them, I cannot recall which one specifically, but I had to edit it up, uh, open it up in CFF Explorer and change the, the version of the library it was referencing just so I could get it to include into my project. So... Not something I want to do a lot of, but it worked eventually. Visual Studio Online had some uptime problems early on. Um, I think between September and November, there were two days where they had multiple hour downtimes. So it was something. It was you know it wasn't too big of a deal because we were using Git, but we couldn't do builds at that time. And the culprit, they usually reported it right away. They have a status page, which is nice. They'll tell you exactly what it is, and there's every time with something with Azure, I'm sure um, they worked out the the uh, glitches because from from November to now, which is January 2014, we haven't had any uh, uptime problems that we've noticed. So it's been great. Uh, credential management was a bit of a trick. Um, it doesn't integrate with Active Directory, so we had to do some. Uh, interesting things on how we set up our credentials. So what we're doing is we're creating our Microsoft account and our primary has to be our work email address. And that way we can just quickly at a glance see who's authorized to be in or not. And so it's easy to just to prune the list if someone ever you know got added in, in, inadvertently. Um, however, your work account has to be primary to log in. So you can't just take your Outlook.com or your Hotmail.com address and just add an alias for your work account and come in. You have to make it, you add your alias, then you make it primary. And that works great until you want to go back to your Outlook.com or your Hotmail account. If your work account is the primary, you can't log into those. So there's something goofy with that. Um, I just recommend if you don't have a Microsoft account tied to your work account already, to your work email address, just create it from scratch. It's okay to have two Microsoft credentials, you know. So just do that. It'll save you a lot of headache trying to set all that up. Um, one other thing, too, we, we had one developer have problems with a uh, percent sign in his passwords. Um, I don't think that is still the case, but if you really can't figure out authentication, um, Try messing around with the password and seeing if that fixes it. Uh, we love this setup. We love Visual Studio Online, the cloud. We love a lot of things. And let me tell you why. 
first off, our team didn't have to wait for all the necessary you know, red tape to be put in place so that we can actually start using TFS. Uh, usually you have to have certain CALs set aside, the certain version of, you know, v Windows Server, a certain version of SQL Server, and, you know, the build agents have to be all set in place. And it, it's a process to get Team Foundation Server set up on process, on premise. We could just start moving to TFS when we were ready for it, to, sorry, to Visual Studio Online. We didn't have to have all those machines requisitioned and set up. Uh, we didn't have this... Um, everybody check in your source code at 5 p.m. on Friday and on Monday you're going to come back to work and we'll be in the new TFS. You know, and, and those are great, but you feel bad for the guys that are migrating it. Um, they are, they, they, they show up on Monday morning and they, you know, and uh, they have coffee in their hand and bloodshot eyes and they're asking you if everything worked out okay and you're, you know, looking to see if your builds are working and only half of them work. Uh, you know, we didn't really have to worry about that big, massive migration for the company because, uh, you know, we don't have these servers sitting here taking up space that we have to shut down right away. So it was nice for us just to jump to TFS when we were ready for it and not have this um, weekend of heavy hope that, you know, everything worked. Um, frequent updates. Visual Studio Online is always pushing changes. You'll see here's just our schedule from, you know, recent uh, months and you can see a couple months when they pushed out uh, twice that month uh, it, it's it's nice to log in and see a new report on your dashboard new functionality and they're continually improving things and you get that frequent update schedule by being in the cloud you don't get that with your on-premise DFS Git was a huge win for us probably my favorite win out of the whole process um, we can branch often and easily. We don't have to think about so the branching so hard. It's not like with TFBC where you have to like get out an architecture diagram and pre-plan where your branches are going to be and what folders they come from. When the server goes down, we don't care really um, because we can just keep working. It's it's not a centralized source control. It's distributed, so I can branch, I can commit, I can roll back, I can do all that stuff. People or other developers are doing that on their machines. We'll get synced up eventually when the server comes back up. And Git's really actually powerful enough where you can have multiple remotes set up. You can have a GitHub, a Bitbucket. You could set up an Azure one. You can push to a different remote if Visual Studio Online is down. And, and still you can share code that way. Or you can push right to another developer's machine. Uh, you can also work from home. You don't have this, uh, I have to VPN in so I can just check into TFS. You can do that. It works very well. The main question I wanted to ask my team when I, when I got their opinions on Git was, would you, having worked with both Team Foundation Version Control and Git, would you go back to TFVC? And every single one said no. And I actually expected maybe one of the two newer developers to say yes, and they did not say that. They all said no. So this was, this was a great, um, I don't know, this was a great metric to see for me that uh, the Git is, is being used successfully on our team. How did I train my team to learn Git? Uh, how did we all come together to be Git experts or, or comfortable with Git in such a short time? Here's a brief timeline. Uh, starting in June, I was double committing code to uh, TFS and Git. And uh, I wanted, you know, I'd do a TF check-in and then I'd do a Git push, you know, roughly. And I just wanted to try out Visual Studio Online back when it was in beta. We couldn't do builds um, on our on-premise yet, so it wasn't an option for us, but I just wanted to see how it all worked. And then... Um, for those three months I was just kind of hoping we could go to Git someday um, and then we heard that uh, the you know agents uh, build agents running locally was an option and so that's when we could actually start modifying our build and getting it working with Visual Studio Online so I started building that it took me a few uh, you know late nights of work and getting that all set up and once that was ready to go I we started training as a team um, we went to CodeSchool.com for their Git Real training, which was a very good intro. 
It had uh, Greg Pollock had an introductory video, and then it's an interactive uh, learning where you actually type commands in at the command line and, and see visually what's going on. Um, as an aside, I highly recommend when you learn Git to learn the command line first. Several reasons for that. First one is um, all the power is in the command line, so you will find there's things you can't do with a GUI tool, and you never really will be able to do everything at the GUI. It's there's some point you're going to have to go to the command line to do the more advanced merging uh, or or moving branches elsewhere, that sort of thing. Another reason why is if you use the command line, you think in Git. It forces you to think in Git, which will help you understand it quicker. And the last and probably more important reason is that there's going to be a time when you need help. You get yourself backed into a corner. How do you fix it? You're going to go to Stack Overflow, do a search, and there will be advice out there. But the advice will never be click on this button and then do this and right click on this. It's always going to be a command line help. So if you don't understand what the command line is doing, that help won't give you, do you much good. Maybe it's telling you the wrong thing, but you can't pick up on it if you don't know the command line. So at least have a basic understanding of the command line and forget and not be afraid of it. So teach your team that way. You don't have to use command line really that much, but it's good to know. Uh, after the code school uh, training, we went to, through uh, this, this great tool called Learn Git Branching, free site. And you can just, um, man, you can get the team into a room. It gives you a challenge. It's, it's uh, I think, something like 20 challenges. They show you a goal, and you have to type git commands to get your, uh, get your source tree to the desired state. It's a great learning opportunity, and it teaches you the more advanced stuff with git. And it makes the developers walk out of the room going, yeah, this is really cool. Now I see why Git's so powerful. Um, then uh, after the training, we created the, you know, we had the basic build process in, in place. It didn't do all our, our custom build activities, but it at least deployed and ran some unit tests. And we were going to modify it as time went. Um, and then on uh, September 17th, got a, the team into a room. I put my laptop up on the projector and we, I showed how we connect to Visual Studio Online. We set up our accounts, our credentials, turned that all on and I got everybody to pull the source code to their machine. And then we checked in some changes and we, we checked out a file and we just modified it and I just wanted to see how the merge um, process would work. Here is our training, uh, codeschool.com, uh, the Get Real trainings there, that is a pay. Um, you pay 30 bucks for a month subscription. Um, it's worth it just to do a month of training anyway with, with that. They have some really good training on CoffeeScript and uh, jQuery, some good stuff. Um, if you just want to stay on the free side, there's all kinds of good, cool Git training out there. The one that I highly, highly, highly recommend is this Learn Git Branching. Here's the URL, pcoddle.github.io slash learn git branching. I believe that's case sensitive. And then uh, after that, uh, roughly four hours of training, we spent another hour setting up our Visual Studio, Git extensions, cloning the repo, and connecting Visual Studio Online. That was the September 17th uh, switchover date. Here's a screenshot on the left-hand side of Learn Git Branching. And, and th on the left-hand side, you can see the goal. On the right-hand side, you can see your current state. And you're typing in commands down here to get that to, to look the way you want. Our fun merge on September 17th looks like this. Here is Git extensions. You can see the, the branches um, uh, that were, sorry, the states where the file diverged. And when we merged together, we all had a lot of fun uh, just figuring out how the merge complex works. And then checking the blame afterwards, kind of like annotate in TFS and just seeing you know, how accurate it was. Uh, Visual Studio Online. I want to say one thing about it. It's nice up here in the fluffy clouds. I, w I would highly recommend it. And if you are in the Omaha area and you want to work at the best place to work in Omaha, come come work with us uh, at Farm Credit Services of America. You can go to this URL uh, down below to see a listing of our current jobs. And um, we'd love to have you on the team. We're working in an agile a uh, lean shop doing Kanban and uh, building some great uh, customer-facing apps using some cutting-edge uh, technology.
help us get to continuous delivery. Um, here's my information if you want to reach out to me. Uh, my name's Paul Oliver. Uh, you can email me, paul at enterprisemapper.com. Follow me on Twitter at It's Palpastic. And if you want to throw a few uh, Satoshis my way using Bitcoin, I won't, I won't uh, turn them away. There's my QR code. Thank you.